Fibonacci spirals can be applied at some of the earliest signs of a potential reversal. In this case, one can be applied at the low and high price of a bearish candle, which has traded at the highest price so far in this current uptrend. Then as price accelerates lower, there's further validation of the spiral's position. But since price is on a near vertical drop, the outer portions of this spiral will likely not contact price anytime soon. So we can flip it down for another spiral orientation to get shorter term coverage of the spiral to the right side. As the reversal progresses, the spiral naturally arcs down sharply. Then the area of interest is where price contacts the spiral. That means in this bearish context of falling price, the $20 boundary at the beginning of 2022 is a price range and a time range where there could likely be more potential for opposition to falling price. This did turn out to be the case for a short time, but it doesn't necessarily mean contact with the spiral would be a guarantee of support for a rebound. Rather, it's more of an identification or confirmation of where there can be more contention against the trend. When a Fibonacci spiral is applied to the low and high price of one of the most bullish candles in this area of congestion, it also marks the start of the next area where there could be potentially more support against the downtrend. Though as price continues to fall further after another brief period of congestion, it's helpful to flip the spiral for more coverage to the right side. However, this obviously produces poor results, because although the spiral is based on a bullish candle, it wasn't at an area of a clear price reversal, not even a gradual or sharp swing point, unlike the candle the first spiral was based on, within the context of a clear swing point. When Fibonacci spirals are based on the high and low prices of single candles, it's normally preferable to have them in the context of a sharper swing point, or generally a more defined reversal context. The candle this spiral is based on is similar to the context of that area of congestion. Price was mostly neutral to slightly bullish. However, it's the lowest point in this potential double bottom, which is quickly failing to produce a bullish reversal and likely to become a continuation range. Nonetheless, it can still be useful in the continuing bearish context, since it contacted price at another area of interest. Still in a bearish context when price contacted the spiral, there was certainly opposition and contention to the downtrend in July, and here there is more progress with a pronounced steeper upswing just after price passed the spiral. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's always preferable to see the spiral contact previous swing points near some of its earliest stages near the center of the spiral. Then finally, here are some almost ideal conditions for a Fibonacci spiral to be applied to a single candle. It's a clear reversal point, in this case an upswing, and the candle is also in a bullish reversal context. The spiral contacts a previous reversal area, in this case the downswing from June. And that $14 area from the downswing in June is a natural choice for marking a place of resistance in the near future. Then as price climbs higher and the spiral arcs over to the right side, we get an approximate idea that near the beginning of August, a major event is possible at this area of interest. Indeed, this green surge quickly goes past the natural area of resistance around 14. With the bullish breakout making good progress, we can flip the spiral to face down for more coverage to arc up and to the right side. Except this doesn't go far enough. Going to the next clear upswing point in the reversal range, which is actually better since it's the lowest point, we still get similar results with the $14 area around August when pointing the spiral upwards. However, we still need more coverage up and to the right side. Though pointing the spiral down and using different candles still doesn't produce good results, even with these more recent minor swing points just before the breakout began. An alternative for more coverage to the right side and upwards that doesn't extend too far or too short involves basing a new Fibonacci spiral on the swing high and swing low of the final portion of the downtrend. As price continues to rise, this is quite useful. The spiral arcs up and to the right side. At the same time, it's a good size, not extending too far or being too small. Using another Fibonacci spiral close by and in the context of the new uptrend can help narrow down an area of interest in both price and time. It's not completely necessary, but it's usually the case that the spirals can point to the same direction, in this case to the right and down. Both pointers are facing to the southeast if it was a compass direction. 
So when the spirals arc back down to meet rising price, it's a context to approximately identify an area of resistance in both price and time for the ongoing uptrend. At this stage up here there's a clear peak, even sharper than the very first downswing that began this case study. The spiral is pointing up so that it can arc down to match falling price. Given the clear candle to base the spiral on in a suitable context, it's not too surprising to see these good results. A reversal range against the downtrend begins almost exactly where the spiral begins to contact falling price. If we used the same high and low prices of that peak candle, but pointed down, even before September began it would become quite obvious this would be an incorrect choice, since the spiral wouldn't even arc back down to a company falling price, let alone make contact with it. 